In the second half of the Genshin Impact patch, Kamisato Ayaka as well as Shanha or Shanhu will be getting a rerun very soon. This is their first reappearance after Dendro has been released in Genshin Impact. And are these characters still relevant or are they still worth your primo even after the Dendro meta? Well, that's what we're going to uncover in today's Shujo Pool video or the Pool Valor video. But as always, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button for me real quick if you're enjoying the video. And let's get started. Starting off with Ayaka, who is a really dominant crowd DPS, and she is just really strong in general. I guess most only play in freeze team where you draft Kayaka followed by a second crowd characters, a all few hydro characters such as Kokomi, and finally a Animo characters, generally speaking, Kazuha. Now, Ayaka doesn't really have a lot of caveat in her kit. For the most part, she is a really fluent to play DPS carry. The only real problem that most people have is generally with her dash, since her dash behaves similar to Mona, where you kind of dig into the ground a little bit. And for some player, many has complained that this feels really unintuitive and not really fluent to use, and it's one of the major complaints when it comes down to playing Ayaka. Nevertheless, this doesn't really affect her meta strength. To be very honest, Freeze team is one of the team that did age really well. While it is true that not all enemy are freezable, and Freeze team does struggle against unfreezable enemy, typically boss chamber, whenever the enemy is freezable, typically speaking mobbing chamber, then Freeze team is still a really, really solid choice and really strong against those type of chamber, especially since your team just have a lot of options when it comes down to doing AoE damage or really, really powerful elemental burst damage. Ayaka's main play style is focused around casting her elemental burst on a bunch of enemy at once and doing a bunch of damage. This generally means that you really want a Animo grouper in your party like Kaza or Venti to group up those enemy and of course once those enemy are grouped up, use your crowd and hydro application to freeze the enemy together in place and finally cast a really powerful Ayaka elemental burst on top of them to do a lot of elemental burst AOE damage, hopefully deleting all the enemy at once. While Ayaka is a character that is really reliant on her elemental burst, she doesn't really have that many major caveat when it comes down to her gameplay. Her elemental burst doesn't have the biggest AOD, but fortunately, generally speaking, you'd bring her in with a grouper, again like Kaze or Venti, and while her elemental burst could occasionally miss mobile enemy, the benefit of having a free team is that you can freeze the enemy in place to make sure that your Ayaka can easily land her entire elemental burst to do that damage. That is the biggest benefit of running her in a free team. It's just really, really comfortable to run in general. Plus, enemy that are frozen can't really attack you, which overall make the survivability on a team a lot easier as well. Ayaka do have a 80 energy recharge elemental burst, but fortunately Ayaka doesn't have that major energy recharge issues thanks to her really excellent crowd energy generation. Plus, generally speaking, you're gonna run her with a second crowd support that is generally gonna be running the Phonius weapon series to generate additional particle. On top of that, if you can get your hand on the Amenoma Kageuchi weapon, which is one of the best force out weapon for Ayaka, then she's not really gonna run into that much energy issues. And fortunately, this weapon is really easy to obtain since it is a crowd Inazuma weapon, so most players should be able to get their hand on one. The attack subset is really nice to complement the crit rate that you get from the Blizzard Trader artifact. On top of that, the passive allow you to generate energy on Ayaka, which again just make her overall rotation relatively smooth. You do want to hope for a little splash of energy recharge on your artifact, but overall your Ayaka shouldn't really have a massive energy recharge problem and should generally have a relatively smooth selling gameplay. The biggest benefit of being able to run Ayaka in the free team is of course that means you get to use the Blizzard Trader artifact for plus 40% additional critical rate if the enemy is frozen. This unfortunately do mean that Ake is a little expensive to build since you have to pour a bunch of resin into the Blizzard Trader domain, which isn't the most straightforward to farm. Fortunately, if you do have a lot of artifact lying around, you could just strong box the Blizzard Trader artifact as well. That is a really valid option. The one and only major downside when it comes down to a free team is of course unfreezable enemy, typically bosses. Now, Ayaka could actually still deal with bosses decently, but obviously it is not as great since you do lose a lot of the major benefit provided by a freeze team such as the freeze reaction itself or the 20% additional crit rate from the blistery artifact which means you just do less damage. Now fortunately Ayaka could just brute force this chamber with sheer power on her elemental burst or you could alternatively run something like a mono crowd team so it isn't like Ayaka is fully unplayable when against unfreezable enemy, but of course just a lot less efficient to play when you compare it to many other teams in Genshin Impact. Overall, I think Ayaka is still a really strong crowd DPS 
even after the Dendro meta. As long as you're facing against feasible content, then Aga will be a really good choice. Her freeze team have excellent mobbing capability, which are generally feasible content, and it's rather easy to play. Really fluent to playing, doesn't have many major issues, plus is rather comfortable to play since the freeze reaction prevent the enemy from attacking you. It just suffered a little bit against bossing content since you can't really get most of the major benefit of playing Ayaka free team in there, but it still could perform if your Ayaka is really invested. The biggest thing to note is that while free team is still really powerful, the angel did create more and more meta team that are just as competitive, namely Hyper Bloom. So the importance of having to own a free team definitely went down, which did hurt Ayaka pool value a little bit. It doesn't mean that she's a weaker character now, but it just means it is less important to own Ayaka over many of the other characters in Genshin Impact that are potentially just as good. While Ake is still a really strong crowd DPS, by no means she is a must pull. There are many other great DPS that you can alternatively pull for if Ake is not a suitable character for you, you don't really care to have a free team, or you just don't like Ake in general, which I would not judge. With that being said, if someone were to come and ask me how likely would I recommend to pull for Ayaka on the meta scale from 1 to 5, then I'll probably put her around 3.5 out of 5, which means I will recommend this character above most other average characters in Genshin Impact rosters. I still think there is great benefit of owning a freeze team in your arsenal just in case you do need it. And again, freeze team are really strong when it comes down to the right condition. But again, just not as important to own as before since there are many other great DPS that you can alternatively pull for as well. So yeah, that's where Ayaka currently is. The same unfortunately cannot be said for the other crowd character coming in the banner, which is Shan He or Shan Hu. Because to be very honest, this character doesn't have a lot of pool value. It doesn't mean she's weak. She does perform okay in her intended role, which is a crowd support, but it's not really valuable to pull forward for your account, unless you just really like her for her big personality. When it comes down to Shan He, there's a couple important things to note. She is primarily played as a second cryo for your freeze crowd team as a crowd support slash buffer. While there are other ways you can use her, namely something like as a DPS in the reverse melt team, those are generally not preferable playstyles in the Genshin Impact meta, but could be runnable if you do just really really want to play Shanna as like a reverse melt DPS. Shanna as a crowd support is a really deceptive one. At first, it might seem like she's an excellent crowd support because she's able to buff your other crowd carry like Ayaka to do a lot more damage. But the thing here is that it is only pretty on number. Generally speaking, in terms of your over all team performance. When it comes down to putting Shanna as your second crowd in a free team, it is not really any more better than putting a cryo character like Rosaria or even Kaya. This is one of the biggest mistakes that most people make is that they see Shanna as a crowd support that dramatically buff your crowd DPS scaling based off her attack. So they just build full attack on Shanna. When in reality, the best way to really play Shanna is to build her just like other crowd utility support by giving her a phonious lens, which help herself to get more energy recharge, but also the rest of our party, as well as something like a 4-piece Noblest on her artifact. This is the best way to play if you're not going for a screenshot DPS and instead it's actually focusing your overall team rotation output when it comes down to your crowd team, which again, unfortunately make her not any more significantly performing than other characters like Rosaria in the same slot, who can most likely yield a really similar team damage output. Of course, Shana do have the additional benefit of enabling mono crowd much better, especially when it comes down to unfeasible enemy that that we've previously talked about, such as facing against the Maku Genki. In this case, using triple crowd setup with Shanta could be a really solid option since the freeze reaction no longer function and you might as well just not bring a Hydro character in your party. Plus the additional crowd characters in the party making it a total of free crowd allow you to just take advantage of Shanta buff much better as you have an additional character to buff in this case. Shanta is not a bad character by any mean when you put her into your freeze team as a second crowd support, but the problem here is just that it is really niche. You effectively pulling for a 5 star character to shove her into one rope or potentially one slash two team. And then, even then, her position here is easily replaceable by other 4 star crowd characters in the game, again, such as Rosaria, assuming they're equally invested. Now, there's one thing that Shanna does do much better than 4 star character in the game, and that is the pay to win factor. It's a 5 star character in the game, Shanna have much higher ceiling with access to, well, 6 more constellations effectively, on top of the fact that you can also just 
well, refine 5, a 5 star weapon on Shenhe. But of course, the thing about Shenhe is that since she scale off your other crowd character stats or attack, which means you can actually further pay to win by also pay to win your other crowd character as well. Namely, with something like a Misbitter Ayaka, maybe with some constellation like C2 or C4, you can get much more out of your Shenhe since Shenhe is able to take advantage of these factors much more than other 4 star characters in the game who are just doing independent crowd damage. This is only really applicable if you are so heavily invested like with 5 star weapon and constellation that you can effectively just one shot everything in the game and maybe you're going for the biggest number in the game instead of just going for clearing the abyss. In which case, you're probably not the target audience for this video because why are you watching a Shijia pull video when you're just gonna pull for C6 anyway? Like, duh. But yeah, for the most general topic that are broke like me and you that are just kind of scrapping by every day with our little amount of primo, this most likely doesn't really apply to you and if you're only looking for a CCO Shanhe, then relatively speaking in the Genshin Impact meta, she's not really that valuable when it comes down to your pull value. Again, you can still consider pulling her if you're really, really keen on it, like you really like Ayaka and you just really want to make Ayaka do the most damage possible or just have a little bit more suitability when it comes down to unfeasible enemy because you rather just bring Mono Cryo compared to other suitable team or you just really like Shanha big personality, then it's all right to pull for Shanha. But otherwise, in terms of pull value, in terms of meta, I would advise not pulling on Shanha since it is just easily replaceable. With all those being said, on a scale of 1 to 5 where if someone were to come and ask me the question, how likely would I recommend pulling for Shanha on their account, I would probably give them a 2. Keep in mind that 1 implies this character is a please don't ever pull, and 5 is a character that you have to pull right now as a must pull. Shanha fall into a 2 because she's just not really valuable to pull for and it's something that I would recommend people to not pull for, but if they're really keen then I think there's some room to be argued. Like, again, Shana personality, or you just really want to make Aka do a lot of damage. I think Shana is one of the most misunderstood characters by casual or TikToker, since Shana's entire purpose is to generate a bigger number on your cryo characters, but not actually to give you better DPS, since DPS stands for damage per second, not damage per screenshot. And of course, when it comes down to TikTokers, big numbers equals good, so they see big number and they think Shana is the best character in the game, when in reality, she probably just isn't really that great in terms of pull values. It's a fine characters in terms of meta string, it's fine as a second crowd characters, but just easily replaceable by again other characters like Rosaria, which dramatically decrease her pull value a lot. If you are if free to play and you're really looking to maximize your values on your premium a little bit. So yeah, with that being said, that is gonna be it for today's your pull video or pull value video. And uh, let me know what you think in the comment below and if you're gonna be pulling for these characters. And uh myself leave a like while you're at it. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, I'll see you guys okay, bye YouTube.